Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at identities in calculus. Now, in most calculus problems where you have to use identities, the object would be to take a complicated expression and make it simpler for the sake of computational ease. But there are occasions where it's actually necessary to take a simple expression and make it more complicated just to make the calculus easier. So we've got an example here where we've got the cosine cubed of x equals 1 minus the sine squared of x times the cosine of x. And the left-hand side is much simpler than the right-hand side, but as far as calculus goes, the right-hand side can actually be easier to work with depending on what we're doing. So we're going to take something that's simpler and turn it into something that's more complicated. So I'm going to start by looking at this cosine cubed of x, and I see that we're separating a cosine out of there. So I'm going to take a cosine out, and then that's going to leave me with a cosine squared of x. Now cosine squared, we should be able to use a Pythagorean identity, and we can replace that with 1 minus sine squared of x. Now these are essentially saying the same thing. I know the multiplication is out of order, but multiplication is commutative, meaning that the order does not matter. So these are in fact saying the same thing. So we have proven this identity. Now we're gonna take a look at another example where we take the simpler left-hand side and do some work to make it into the more complicated right-hand side. So as we look, we've got the sine squared of x times the cosine to the fifth power of x, and we're going to show that that's equal to the sine squared of x minus 2 sine to the fourth power of x plus sine to the sixth power of x, all times the cosine of x. So the first thing I notice is that we've separated a cosine out of there. So we're going to take the sine squared of x. I'm going to take a cosine out, and I'm going to put that on the end. So that's going to leave me with the cosine to the fourth power of x. Now that fourth power might be a little tricky to deal with, but we can actually rewrite that using a smaller power. So we've got the sine squared of x. Now where we've got this cosine to the fourth, we can actually think about that as cosine squared squared, because when you take something and raise it to another power, you multiply those exponents together. So it would be cosine to the fourth. And then we've still got this other cosine of x on the end. Now I'm going to use a Pythagorean identity with this cosine squared inside of my parentheses. And cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared of x. But then we need to square that times the cosine of x. Now remember, squaring something means times itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of that squared power. And I'm going to write out another copy of this 1 minus sine squared. Because what we're going to do is a little bit of foiling with those binomials. So we've still got this sine squared at the very front, but I'm gonna start foiling this out. So one times one is one. One times negative sine squared is minus sine squared of x. Negative sine squared times one is minus sine squared of x. And then negative sine squared times negative sine squared is positive sine to the fourth power of x. And then we still have this cosine of x on the end. Now we've actually got some like terms that we can combine inside of our parentheses. So we've got the sine squared of x, we've got one minus, here's a minus sine squared of x, and here's a minus sine squared of x. So we're gonna put those together to get minus two sine squared of x. And then we've got our plus the sine to the fourth power of x. And then we've still got that cosine of x on the back end. Now I'm gonna take this sine squared and I'm going to distribute it in. So sine squared times one is the sine squared of x sine squared times negative two sine squared is gonna be negative two sine to the fourth power of x. And then sine squared times sine to the fourth power is gonna be plus sine to the sixth power of x. And then we've still got this cosine of x hanging out on the back end. Now what we've got on the left hand side is matching up with what we've got on the right hand side. So we have confirmed this identity. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching.